this video is for you. If that little voice in your head is telling you a story that is making you feel as though you just want to scream a little bit. Happened to me last Friday. I had a really big week and lots of opportunities I thought were going to drop just evaporated. Either the prospect couldn't commit or they felt unwell or simply they didn't respond. And of course, what did I start thinking? That everything was falling apart, my methodology wasn't working, and perhaps I shouldn't be doing what I was doing. And it starts to eat you up inside to make you believe that something has gone wrong. But instead of resting on that, I thought about it carefully. And I dived into Byron Quake Katie's four empowering questions. And these questions help you get some perspective, take a step back, almost hover above the problem to make you think about it differently. And these are the four questions I ask myself. First of all, is it true? Is what I'm thinking about me not being good enough or my clients, potential clients not wanting to commit? Is it really true that this could be happening? Hmm. I wasn't quite certain. And then the second question that she asked you to ask is, can you absolutely confirm it is? Unequivocally, without that doubt, can you confirm that the thought you're having is true or false? And then I started thinking more carefully. Well, how do I know that just because somebody's unwell, it doesn't mean that they don't want to commit? How do I know that the prospect that said actually no wasn't just being told by somebody else that this is the decision? Or the person that just didn't turn up, something could have really important happened, which meant that they didn't. So when you confirm those three, two questions, the third question is, if it is true, how would you react? Well, if it was true that all these things were evaporating, my reaction might be, how could I be better? Where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? Who can teach me more about how things could be the case? But actually, the second question when it said, is it absolutely true, said to me, actually, I don't know whether it is true. And therefore, I need to be patient and ask. And sure enough, over the following three days, many things transpired to show me that a lot of my personal doubts were unfounded. And actually, one person just wasn't well. A second person missed the meeting link. And the third person literally couldn't proceed because the price was outside of their procurement level. And it made me feel a lot better. But Byron Katie's fourth question is, once you decide how you react, the fourth question is, who would you be without that thought? So if the thought was negative or it was debilitating or it was inwardly putting pressure on yourself, how could you re-spin that so that you can react differently without that thought? Or how could you proceed in a different way? And this brings me to Viktor Frankl's lesson. Viktor Frankl wrote an amazing book called Man's Search for Meaning. And he talks about the gap between stimulus and response. We have a stimulus and then there's a response. And he talks about in that gap between stimulus and response lies our power to make a choice. And in that choice lies our power to personal freedom. So think when I've got that desire to create a response, how can you use the gap between the response and your informed response to be a response that is the best way of reacting for you? Personally, yes, I do get thoughts that sometimes spin out of control and persecute myself. But using some of these techniques for personal resilience and challenging that thought process to be different it certainly makes me have a more empowering, mentally less exhausting 
modus of operandi every day. Hope that's helpful to you. Remember, all of this is all about making sure that we have one life and we love life, living life. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.